Hey guys, welcome back to the trail. Happy New Year for 2022. Behind me is the Centurion Tank of Leyland, which commemorates our building of the uh, Centurion model tank during World War II, and then on to uh, other conflicts until the uh, works were shut down. So they dumped this tank here as a memorial to it. Called it the fingerless tank because uh, so many manufacturers lost fingers while it was being built. Health and safety nightmare. Well, that was Bobby the horse, and it's a big Leyland sculpture. <clears throat> Excuse me, harking back to the days of the agricultural times when the Hildes land used to be rich in crops and farming. And it was horses like that that would pull carts full of grain, full of food uh, to be carried around the country. So it's kind of a memorial. It's quite nice, all metal and former horseshoes and the like. So yeah, anyway, tip number five, fitness. My views on fitness sometimes come up in the videos. I'm going to try and keep this brief. There's three stages to fitness for me. Number one, you can just do nothing. And it doesn't stop a lot of people. There's a few Instagrammers I know who uh, maybe have weight issues or health issues or anything. It doesn't stop them getting out and they seem to have a lot of fun. I suppose you could go down that road. I personally would recommend uh, the second stage, which is to at least be walking daily to build up your uh, stamina, your physical fitness. Maybe just short walks, one or two miles a day. Maybe if you've got a dog, you could walk the dog twice a day, which you should be doing anyway. So that could be involved making a route in your local area and just making sure you're recording that it might be a mile or two miles. Rather than just freewheeling it, you should really be walking for 60 minutes, maybe twice a day. And that would build up your overall stamina so that when you do your longer walks at the weekend, you would then be able to uh, feel the difference each time. And as the days go by, as you build up that fitness, you'll begin to see the results. There's also an extra step that you might choose to go to, which is not only daily walking during the week, but also perhaps getting a gym membership so that you can specifically focus on parts of your body that are involved in hiking. It's all over body workout, really, that you're looking for. But you do, I do recommend you focus on perhaps the traps, your shoulders, your back, uh, which are going to be carrying the heavy weight of the backpack, and also a good leg workout to work some of those stabilizing muscles on hip adductors and things like that. If you're in any doubt, do your own research. I do recommend one of the many personal trainers at these gyms that you can get involved in. Tell them what your goals and ambitions are and that it's to do with hiking, and they'll give you a regimen that will uh, then to fine tune those areas i wouldn't let your fitness stop you or your uh, medical condition unless of course there's a danger but i see many people on instagram who are more than happy to get out in any condition whatever form they're in so that's my recommendations tip number five it's not a critical tip it's definitely never going to be number one but my life got a lot easier on the trail when i lost a bit of weight that i didn't need to carry around with me and when I built up some physical fitness for doing the hill climbs and of course for carrying my backpack which now comfortably can be 20 kilos and it's just not an issue. So there you go, that is tip number five. Okay, tip number four, mental health. I know none of us like to sort of address it or talk about it openly, but I think it is an issue and much like your physical health, tip number five, you do need to keep an eye on your mental health. And for me, it's the kind of thing that's never talked about really in depth in the hiking community. And I think people will talk about how they went out and they go walking to improve their mental health. But I also want you to look at what's your mental health before you go for the walk, what it's like afterwards, what it's like during the week between walks. And to have a daily mentality of checking in with yourself and making sure you're in a good place, that you never go on a walk when you're not in a good place and you never force yourself to go on a walk. If your mind confidence isn't there, if you're just not feeling it or you're uh, anxious, then don't attempt the walk, don't do it. And find, try to find out what that cause may, may be. And if that cause has a medical issue, then I do recommend you get some help. 
if perhaps there's some sort of background that's making you nervous something that's causing anxiety that needs to be dealt with before you go out deal with it but do not be afraid to simply not go on a walk that you've planned because your head's not in the right place don't assume that when you go out on the walk it will improve it might not and the last thing you want to be is on a hill or a mountain in a bad mental state with no help available so i want you to take tip number four seriously and really consider it no matter who you are no matter how strong you consider yourself to be i think we all suffer from at least anxiety in some situations and perhaps you're uh, a person who regularly overuses coffee or alcohol maybe you've been on a bender the night before maybe your lifestyle has a lot of alcohol in it and that affects your mental health so check in with yourself guys tip number four that's what it's going to be check in with yourself ask yourself where you are mentally before you get out on the trail and i hope that like me that when you do get out there you do feel that boost of being in nature of exercise of the endorphins but just a general enjoyable feeling of being out in the wild enjoying what you love so that's it for me tip number four tip number three pack load out now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of these top five tips pack load out if you haven't watched my video already there are two pack load out from the previous year the pack load out from 2021 i want you to watch those videos and then come back off you go right having watched those videos or having already watched those videos you know that pack loadout is crucial to a good hike. Now, you might be like me, you might like to pack the kitchen sink and get a big bag just so you can fit the kitchen sink in. And I'm gonna say that is better than what I do see out on the trail, which is people with no pack loadout. This is why it's ranked number three on my list, because I do see people going out with perhaps a small bottle of water and a tangerine, and it kind of irritates me. Maybe they're wearing shorts and trainers. So we need to find a middle ground that you're not necessarily ca carrying the uh, kitchen sink, but you're not carrying the tangerine either, somewhere in the middle. So I do recommend you do some research, not necessarily just my videos, though it's a good place to start, but go and see what other hikers are doing and what other hikers are putting in their pack. The reason being, out on the trail, you are isolated. And even though you might think you're on a popular trail, a simple turn of the ankle, a twist, a fall, a stumble, can then isolate you from the entire of the human race very quickly. And I've known that even with my lovely Apple products, Apple iPhone, that when I really do need it, there's sometimes not a signal and there's not help for miles. So pack loadout needs to be in your top three priorities. Make sure you understand what's in your pack, that you're very familiar with it and that you get used to carrying it so that you can go straight to a piece of equipment whenever you need to and you know it's always going to be there before a hike i always check my pack load out my bag is always packed ready for going but even before a trail knowing that i take everything out check it all put it all back so i'm, I'm confident then that i know what's in my pack and everything's where it should be things like batteries should be replaced regularly or recharged in the case of a power pack and you should check wear and tear on cables if you're going to take some with you. So pack load out really does need to be high on your priority list. I do the research, put the effort in, get a good backpack, get a good load out. So you can be confident that when you're walking, you ain't got any problems. You've got all this good kit on your back. That is tip number three. So tip number two, navigation. We've talked about navigation quite a bit on the trail. And for me, it's always going to be an Ordnance Survey map to 125. It's always going to be printed out with the route marked on and the mileage. And it's also going to be backed up by the Ordnance Survey app on my Apple iPhone. The reason for the paper map is that if my phone fails or I lose signal, and I've conveniently forgotten to download the map to my phone, I do have that paper map. I do navigate with my phone. I don't think in the 21st century that's a big issue. But if you're going to navigate solely with your iPhone, it's going to be game over. And I've come across some of you guys with your Google Maps. Google Maps ain't going to cut it. Ordnance Survey, if you're in the UK, I'm sure there's American equivalents or an equivalent in whichever country you're watching this video in. You need to get the map. You need to familiarise yourself with your map. And I do recommend you do at least a one-day training course in map reading and navigation. Again, I highly recommend Team Hill Walking Skills with Mark Reed. You can easily Google them in the UK. 
and you can book a one day or two day or a three day course if you're really serious about it i do recommend that that's number two on my list simply because it's so important and people get it so wrong so easily and to get lost on the hills is embarrassing it's dangerous and it's probably going to involve getting mountain rescue out you need to know that mountain rescue in the uk is bodied by um volunteers so they're putting their lives at risk for you for free so bear that in mind if you're going to get yourself stuck out on a mountain somewhere i recommend you don't and it's actually quite fun that when you get into map reading and plotting your own routes and building them yourself you can have a lot of enjoyment a lot of freedom and a lot of confidence you'll start feeling like you can navigate anywhere so navigation tip number two prioritize that one do the research all the resources are so easily available for a very small price i think the ordnance survey app itself is only about 5.99 a month come on the things are work of art when you look at it you can easily plot your routes on a computer a tablet or your phone save it print it off carry it in your pocket so come on guys tip number two it's easy navigation so guys last and certainly not least tip numero uno number one boots this has to be at the top of anyone's hiking list boots pay the money guys don't buy cheap don't go sports direct get your 30 pound pair of caramores look i'm on my fourth am i on my fourth third pair of solomons now yes about 140 pound a pair for the gtx4 absolutely love them fresh out the box i will do a gear review video on them soon comfortable out of the box i know i'm not going to get any blisters with these guys i might get wet feet that does seem to be an issue but even wet never get a blister with solomon's you don't have to pay that much but i do ask that you pay a little bit more than you're paying now you choice to go full leather or synthetic is entirely up to you i recommend you experiment but if you're putting these boots on and you're breaking them in there's an issue to some degree not necessarily with leather boots don't hate me but you can pick up a pair of solomons for 130 pound how many takeaways have you had this month how many bits of rubbish have you bought over christmas your selection boxes your food stuff that you could have just trimmed a little bit off put that money to one side and bought yourself a pair of shoes so i highly recommend that you get your act together get a decent pair of boots it is like putting clouds on your feet when you've got a good pair of boots that is why it's tip number one and i'm speaking from experience i've worn a lot of cheap shoes hoping to cut corners hoping to find the uh, solution to the wrong problem when all i needed to do was maybe cut back on some of my frivolous spending put that money and invest invest in a decent pair of boots i obviously recommend solomon i'm not sponsored by solomon i don't want to be sponsored by solomon but i know a good brand when i wear it so try solomon's the gtx one is perhaps 100 pounds you could start there go a half size bigger than you need always go a half size bigger than you need because your feet swell on the trail do that get some good boots and you will not regret it tip number one so there you go guys that's my top five hiking tips that i've been thinking about over the past few months sorry i've been quiet on the channel life's been very busy i hope you guys have had a great christmas a great new year and i hope you're looking forward to getting out on the trail in 2022 i certainly am we've got plenty planned got some new technology to help smooth things out with the videos and uh, yeah i'm really excited for 2022 so i thought i'd do this video to check in with you guys and as you start planning for the year maybe you can be thinking about the five things i've mentioned anyway guys you take care of yourself and i will see you next time back on the trail